Yeah. Okay. Recording is up and rolling and stream is up and rolling. We saw. All right. So I was trying to rewatch some of our uh, hijinks from last week. So I believe where we had left off, you all had uh, finally started zeroing in on the source of these strange attacks and, uh, and burglaries that had originally drawn your group together. You discovered that the source of these uh, fae-driven robberies was actually a human wizarding student named Alan Blake, uh, recently severed ties with the Blackthorn Academy and was maybe carrying a bit of a chip on his shoulder. Silence the phone. Uh, <laughs> that is the sound of a chip on your shoulder. <laughs> Ironically, that was actually Twitch telling me I could run everything off of my phone if I wanted to. Okay. Uh, so Blake had a bit of a grudge against the Blackthorns uh, and was frustrated at not being able to pursue the course of magical studies that he wanted. Uh, so somehow he came into possession of an unusual artifact, uh, two actually, that you found uh one I, I believe one of on his possession uh a very unusual magical artifact woven together with cold iron and silver uh somehow this was allowing him to summon and control fey uh you managed to track him down to uh some kind of warehouse space where it seemed like he was performing a ritual the ritual seemed to be related to this uh, fey gate that was opening in the space uh, and it actually seemed like it was somehow related to Blake's own body he was experiencing some kind of strange manifestations and patches across his body oh my camera is real laggy catch up okay there it is um, <laughs> we just can't get all the tech moving in the same direction at the same time so you successfully defeated Blake you seem to have disarmed this ritual somehow uh, and now you're left in a very strange situation uh, you were briefly transported into a uh, actually really nice section of fairy uh, it seemed to be in the Sealy Lands uh, a big, beautiful sort of open hillside with standing stones. Uh, and then when you managed to separate Blake from this portal, uh, you snapped back into the warehouse. And now you have a very battered and beaten Blake uh, who's Zyra wrapped in a cloak. And uh, you have a very confused security guard uh, who is, uh, you're actually not sure. He's somewhere behind you at this point. So what would you all like to do? Well, first thing first, the security guard is not floating anymore. All the unusual effects seem to have stopped as soon as uh, this, this nascent gate was broken. All right. I'm going to find the security guard right away. All right. Uh, he is not hard to find. Uh, he seems to be slumped up against one of the walls pretty close to the door. And it looks, his mind has been blown. Not in a lethal way, but he is incapacitated. Uh, <laughs> each of you had sort of your own protections uh, to enter into face space. He did not. So that cascade of sensory information and weird magical energy has just rendered him <laughs> I kind of gently uh, tap, 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 tap. Uh, all you get is a little bit of drool and a... <laughs> well, I guess that's taken care of then. 
How does Blake look? Uh, Blake looks better in some ways, but still bad. <laughs> uh, the sort of arcane medical situation he seemed to be in, uh, it seemed that there was a... Well, let's, let's have you make a, an arcana check, everybody. We'll see how much you all piece together of what was happening. Woo! I got an 11. I got twice that. I got a natural one. Dirty 20. All right. 22. So, <laughs> Oric and Zyra, you sort of piece this together. It seems like whatever this artifact was doing, it seemed to be overriding Blake's human nature piecemeal. Not all at once, not a synthesis, but it literally seemed that almost like he had a demand in his body. Uh, parts of him were overlaying with fey energy. And you don't know what it would have done if it had been allowed to continue. Uh, and you removed that fey energy in a very decisive way. Uh, but actually now he has big, uh, still very, very bad looking scars outlining all the areas where you saw that sort of fey skin and coloration. Uh, he seems like he's gonna have some recovery ahead. Does he, does he need healing? Uh, some healing might help. He does still seem to be, before he was bleeding this weird sort of opalescence mingled with blood out of these areas of overlap. Now it is just blood. <laughs> it's not a ton of it. Uh, he doesn't seem to be like immediately bleeding out, but it's the equivalent of like shallow cuts over a lot of his body and whatever supernatural vitality had been driving him has been cut out i'd like to cast cure wounds all right uh 10 hp healed back nice uh so what does your cure wounds look like uh, or healing word, sorry. Uh, this one's this one's cure wounds. Okay. Yeah. Otherwise, the ten would be impossible. Um, it's um, it's a whisper. Um, no one else would be able to hear it. Uh, but just, especially cure wounds is just the person that that I'm touching. Um, and it's a, a whisper of uh, take rest, take healing, take strength, take rest, take healing, take strength, bind up, heal. So your magically imbued refrain washes over him. And you can see uh, it doesn't remove the scars, but it changes them from open wounds to looking like a day or two of healing has passed. Um, it also seems to like clean the wounds uh, and actually all of that sort of blood that had been coming off of him and in very uh, unpleasant ways kind of and is gone. Um, he looks a little better. Uh, being close enough to use cure wounds, you can also see there's just exhaustion and malnutrition and he has been in a bad place on in every sense uh for the last month six weeks something like that this is a human body that's about to give out if he wakes up i have a snickers bar for him <laughs> <laughs> snickers fixes everything wakes up wait we, we had to, we beat him into this state. No. 
Did we though? Uh, so I'm trying to remember. I know you all retrieved the iron rod because that was how you separated him from this other essence. Um, I believe Lexi went and looked through some of the books and paraphernalia. Yeah. Um, do you recall if you found any particular books? She rolled. Um, she found. She found the tome. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I found the tome. But I think we bamfed in and out. Yeah, there wasn't enough time to do much with it. All right. He's located so, it. He hasn't picked it up. Yeah. Yeah. So these are by far the two most unusual items in this space. <coughs> Honestly, everything else is pretty much as advertised. It's just standard, basic wizard educational gear. Um, it's the equivalent of like uh, intro courses. Uh, in game terms, it'd be spell books that only have like cantrips and a couple of level one spells. Uh, maybe a couple of level two spells, but not, not much higher than that. Uh, but the rod and the book are on a whole different level. Um, uh, what have you done with the book now that you're back? Um, I'm still holding on to it at this point because there hasn't really been enough time to do much. <laughs> Uh, and I'm also kind of wary about opening it because of everything that happened to him. Make, uh, Lexi specifically, make a perception check. A six. Um, there's just too much going on. Uh, you feel something like tug at you, but you don't identify what it is. Sounds about right. All right. So you've cast a little healing on Blake. You've secured the rod in the book. Guard seems to be incapacitated. What do you all want to do? Well, let's see, you're the spook. What kind of protocol do we have for this? Yeah, so I'm trying to determine what are what's our order of problems. Like <laughs> Blake's a problem. These two artifacts are a problem. I kind of want to make sure all of the Fae that we left watching TV in his apartment like go home now. <laughs> but yeah but if they're doing the whole tv thing they might be there for a while and okay <laughs> but i'm afraid if we just roll back up to the apartment with blake the rod and the book something bad will happen <laughs> if we just dump all three of those into the same space with these, with these yeah. yeah also So like, I want to get paid, <laughs> but I don't know that I want to just hand all of this to Vela. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. Um, At the very least, I want the book staying with us. It's the rod I'm concerned about. Yeah, I want to, so, so I want to, I don't want to, I don't want those going over. Well, there are plenty of other things that are missing that belong to the, you know, these basic magical items, That's level true. one spell books and such that belong to the college. We don't have a, can, can we distinguish at all? what we think might be like Blake's personal property versus what he stole. So Good point. Uh, considering he was a one. Clarification and a reminder in that order. Uh, as far as you know, 
the rod and the book did not originate with the Blackthorns. They didn't seem to know how Blake was doing this. And it didn't seem that he had disappeared with a powerful magical item uh, from their collection to begin all of this. So as far as you know, what he's stolen is sort of, to a layman, it's very valuable, but to the Blackthorns, like, Mm. Uh, so the rod and the book you don't know where they came from and Vela didn't ask for them specifically right but Miss Detect Magic Tattoo Eyes is gonna spot them if we roll into her house with them I think who says we have to go see her first so yeah so what if we were to take the rod and the book back to Raven's Raven's Bridge, Raven's Crest, Raven's Raven's Crest. Raven's Crest. Raven's Crest. Thank you. Um, he's still he's still wearing the the college gear. Okay. No, I flipped it. Oh, that's right. Because I tried to I tried to uh, fake the guard, fake the guard out to get him to leave. <laughs> Either way, we could take them back to to my office and what if we were to just put them in my office and next time uh, Archie comes in, we could ask him what's going on. Uh, that does you raise know. the second office. issue. Yeah. Auric, you remember what set you on this particular path is that these fey related burglaries uh, were causing problems for the actual fey living in Queensboro. Yeah. Vela specifically asked that you keep this quiet. But unless some kind of information is put forward, this stops the attacks, but it doesn't actually clear the name of the Fae who live in Little Sylvain, which is where your client was. Right. What client? That. Uh, that wasn't out loud. Oh, okay, 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 okay. My okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> Well, and I, I think you probably have said something about it. It's just been like yeah. two months in real world time. It's no. the it was, guy that the, the guy that Steve told me had a reward. The, I mentioned the reward to y'all, but didn't go into much detail. Ev everything that has been spoken out loud about Oric being a PI was only between Oric and Vela. The rest of us were were gone. So that's yeah. right. We were that's, that's worth Chili dog. There if you want, but the rest of us don't know it yet. Just this strange non-dragon dragon thing following us around. Do I have any me or Jace or maybe even nah, I'm probably not going to gimbal. Do we have any like NBI like lockbox kind or like stash places uh yeah you would have a couple um it's it's kind of like the, else, Lexi would have a safe a boring <laughs> safe <laughs> that's true uh like you would have a boring normal safe at the bar how long is this rod that depends oh, oh okay like it's it's a little long for like a wand, but not like a stave. Yeah, kind of in that. Fourteen inches or eighteen? Uh, yeah, eighteen-ish probably. Fitting All right, you, um, the well, I think Lexi's bar sounds like a good idea. Mm -hmm. It's not where people would look, that's for sure. Right. And so also the the, the NBI yeah. depots. Are kind of like that car depot we talked about. There's varying ranges of options that are more and less secure, yeah. but the more, the, the better the service you receive, the more it's going to cost you in information and favors and potential involvement from those people. I yeah. vote, I vote, actually, I vote, I vote Lexi's. more than willing to drive us all over there and put it in the safe because it's up in my office and not in the bar. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
And I want to bring Blake with us. Mm -hmm. We can squeeze somebody in the middle. And... Or in the trunk. I believe I was already relegated to the trunk because of all of the mind control that happened to me. <laughs> yeah, but Blake may have to actually lie down, so he may do better in the trunk. <laughs> How, how do we rate Archie's, like, nurse med, nursing skills? Uh, make, uh, this, would, this would almost have to come down to Zyra. Uh, okay. Make an insight or medicine check. Oh, uh, um, let's do insight. Uh, it's going to be 25. It's a natural 20. Very nice. Your strong suspicion is that Archie would be useless in this area. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to call my dad. All right. Nope, that is not your dad. That is... <laughs> the undergrad who was turned into a velociraptor. <laughs> that would be Nathan. Nathan. That would not be somebody who knows medicine either. <laughs> I mean, you don't know what he's majoring in. Yeah, but he's an undergrad. <laughs> and actually he's majoring in women's studies. See, I knew we were in the humanities department when we were there. I may not have gone to college, but I can sense that. <laughs> All right. So you want to call your dad the graphic designer? Yes. <laughs> okay. Because I'm pretty sure, because uh, I don't know if, because I'm pretty sure mom is, I don't remember what day. It, wait, is it, on the, is it a weekend? Uh, is it it no? is. No, it's a weekday because Zyra had a lecture. Yeah, she's. I don't know that she can, she's software developing. She may be in a, I think, I, I don't think she gets good coverage where she works. So <laughs> dad's freelance. I can interrupt him. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so tell me a little bit more about, about uh, Nathan slash Nate. Yeah. So uh, he's a, uh, he's a freelance graphic designer. Both, uh, both Cyrus's parents work tech stuff um but he does he does that on his own um and uh he's he's got a little uh he's definitely got a little like hippie energy to him <laughs> um very very kind of low-key uh freelance because he doesn't like having a boss he likes to be able to set his own schedule um so he was he was kind of a mix of of he did work but he was also kind of stay at home dadish, um, while while Cyrus was growing up. It's my uncle. It's funny, even with the recordings, it gets hard to keep track of stuff over nine sessions. <laughs> I haven't thought yeah. at all about physical characteristics, so hopefully you don't need those. But all right, uh, so you're going to give him a call? Yeah. Well, we don't we don't have fans yet, so. <laughs> yeah, we don't have a cannon keeper. That's our cannon keeper. Nobody's drawing is a, fan art of this. It's a big Google Doc. <laughs> so I think we decided it was. It's kind of uh, late morning ish. Because yeah. you all took a rest and then went to the apartment in the morning and then went on to the uh, storage place. Yep. Uh, so, because if we're going, if we arrived at the storage facility after we went to the apartment, it was during the lunch hour when we were at the apartment. That's right. So, we're, we're afternoon ish. Um, so, it only rings two or three times uh, before Nathan kicks in and Hello. Hey, Dad. Hey, how's it going? Good. I uh, you home? 
Uh, yeah, I was just getting some work going. What's uh, what's going on? I need a favor with a case. A case? Uh, okay. Um, there's a this university kid and he got himself in way over his head and uh he doesn't look like we we've got him we got him safe now but it doesn't look like he's been eating or sleeping well for a while um oh geez but i need to go i need to go take care of a couple things but i don't I need a spot to let him kind of rest and, and recover. Can y'all keep an eye on him for me for a little bit? Yeah. Uh, there's a, you know, there's the, the couch in my office. We'll just pull it out and set it up and he can, I guess, hang out for a while. Is he, is he safe? Are you all safe? Yeah. Yeah. We're safe. <laughs> He I like the juxtaposition. He's asking this, like sitting at his desk, still kind of like half working, and you're standing there in this like exploded warehouse space <laughs> with this like this scarred young man, uh, probably a little bit of his blood soaked into this blanket around him. <laughs> he says, uh, uh, "I guess we'll, yeah, we can we can help out." Uh, just uh, keep us in the loop. Is he? Are you sure he shouldn't go to a hospital or something? I think we've got him. I don't think he's got. I don't think he's got injuries right now. I think it's just the. He could do with a sleep and a shower and a good hot meal. Or eight. All right says uh all right uh yeah we'll keep an eye out just uh i guess let us know what's going on when you can we'll do thanks dad don't forget uh dinner on sunday i'll be there all right i'll let your mom know thanks <laughs> click so are we closer to I've got them in in Vert. Uh, I believe so. I don't know if it matters if we do Blake first or Safe first. Um, I just figure we do whichever one's closest. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, you all are probably in the because you're kind of in like the student area. This is probably the cheaper end of Vert bleeding over into Falmouth. So really you're, you're pretty close to either. Okay. Let's get rid of the person before the gear. Yeah. <laughs> Free up right. some car. <laughs> that, yeah. Free up some car space. All right, so y'all gonna head out to Pokey? Yep. Sounds good. Double check the security guard one last time. We want to. Do we want to try to move him back to his booth? Just move him outside of the the unit and close the unit door. Yeah. Okay. Into the shade, at least. Yes. In the shade, out of the yeah. unit. Close the unit door. Make sure we write down the unit name and maybe okay. even use the padlock and lock it and just take the key to Vela. Yeah, you, yeah. You very easily find uh, the lock and key uh, in the in the unit wherever Blake had it stashed. It's a little bit more effort to sort of haul this security guard back to his booth and kind of prop him up. Uh, but Lexi wouldn't have any trouble. I was um, gonna say, do you doubt me? <laughs> no. This is it, it's very you, you've carried out more than a few, uh, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Incapacitated. This patrons. one is a fighting back as yeah. I drag as I carry him. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you get him propped up, and it's actually kind of convenient because you can reach over and just smack the release button that opens the gate. Um, you all take po uh, Pokey out, and I guess make your way to. Doo -doo -doo. 
I and as so we are much. driving, I will realize that the rest of the group is not keyed in on my dilemma because they don't know about what's going on with Steve and the what's his face, Mister Peters. I think is what his name was. I so. want to say Pevins, but I will use the, Control F. The rod and the tome are wrapped up both in a different cloak and are in the floorboards of shotgun. I think I've, I've, you got I've, it? I've stashed the rod back okay, in my okay, bag. Okay. Yeah, it's still... And I'm sitting as far away from the rod as possible. I'm still just mage-handing it. <laughs> that's fair, that's fair. All right, all right, the, tome is, the tome is down in the floorboards. Mm. Not stapling on it, but it, I'm just also definitely not touching it. All right, so you all make your way to the Dunhallow household. Uh, what is the Dunhallow household like? Is it a picture? Uh, is it a brownstone? Yeah, it's a brownstone. All right. Uh, it's, got, it's got a little bit of. Somebody at least has, like, in recent years, tried to care about, like, being a flower person, but maybe not, like, in the last several months. <laughs> Some perennials just kind of limply, haphazardly. Yeah. They're trying. <laughs> it's like Except a for the one in the yard. Yeah. The last people to take care of the flowers in our front yard lived here five years ago. They're still blooming. Mm -hmm. They're they're blooming, but they're they're getting a little feral. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, the like, one in the corner is suddenly three times as big. You put pine straw, but we still want to exist. So we're looking out through the pine straw. We love you too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, so you can actually see your your dad is like. Uh, kind of peeking out a uh, second floor sort of bay window where you know his office sits and he kind of he kind of sees you all coming and um, how are you going to get Blake in Alan Blake inside? Is Fireman he... Carey still unconscious? <laughs> what? Is he still unconscious? He is. I'm going to yeah. carry that dude. <laughs> it's all right. He can go over my shoulder. Uh, are you trying to conceal your approach in any way or just like mm. pop out and run to the door? Good point. Maybe the bridal carry would be a bit more like mm -hmm. less this person is completely passed out and more this person might have broken their ankle. <laughs> All right. Uh, I so mean, there's, carry, yes. there's a few looks. Uh, you know, it's, it's a nice neighborhood. It's, it's cold, but like, it's, it's probably the warmest part of the day. You see a few like stalwart dog walkers out there and some people maybe leaving from lunch, going back to work. And there's a few like, hmm. Oh yeah. Did we put him in the truck? If there's anybody that I like remember. I'll give him a I'll give him a wave. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you party party too hard. You know this, this little you know uh, older model sedan rolls up. You pull an unconscious college student out of the <laughs> trunk and <laughs> uh, you're. <laughs> So your, your dad opens the door uh, as you all approach. You don't have to like knock or anything. And he just says, oh, oh, okay. Oh, uh, all right. That's a thing. Uh, and he directs you to uh, a couch in the living room. Uh, it's uh, actually a really comfy couch. It's like that big uh, sort of poofy one. You probably took some naps there uh, as a kid and maybe recently. Um, and you can see he's already kind of gotten out a little bit of a uh, recuperation starter kit. Uh, there's some bottles of water and some blankets and pillows and uh, some various like home first aid supplies. 
Uh, he looks a little flustered. This is not super in his wheelhouse, uh, but he's also a, he's a good guy. He's going to try and take care of this kid. Um, and he, he trusts that you're going to make this make sense later, hopefully. <laughs> Okay. Nate, uh, Nate, was it? Yeah, uh, Nate Dunhallow. Nate, um, Zara, uh, he should be stable. I'm not sure exactly why he hasn't woken up yet. Um, but if he does, let him know he's safe. And uh, if he has any questions, you can have him call Cyrus uh, through your connections. Um, and he, he, he will probably not exactly know where he is, and he may not know who he is, but you can tell him his name is Blake. No, Alan, his name is Alan. Alan. Alan Blake. I really, we have a, I have a friend named Blake Alverson, and I really want that to be his name. Um, <laughs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> He's still kind of mouthing to himself, might not know who he is? Uh, who knows? Um, so, you know, be cool, and and I'm sure you can handle it. Um, <coughs> any questions? Uh, just, just give us a call. He's probably very hungry. So small food, small meals, small bites. High fat, high protein, please. I'll, uh, I'll make him up a, a grilled cheese, I guess. Uh, all right. Be safe. Sure, it's a pleasure to meet you. We've only been Cyrus a couple of days. <laughs> Don't worry, sir. They're incapable hands. Cyrus will make a real adult. round of introductions. Uh, Nate definitely does like the nice to meet you handshake every time. Like just like full, like from the elbow. <laughs> oh, he gets a vigorous handshake back from work. <laughs> like a little bit too much. He just laughs and is like, ha. <laughs> Good handshake. I like this kid. <laughs> uh, so hands are shaken and identities exchanged. Uh, Blake is deposited onto the couch uh, where he still seems to be pretty out of it, uh, leaving you all with uh, a strange and disturbing fey artifact and an ancient fey tome. And uh, one... <laughs> uh, powerful and uh, scary Blackthorn family member to go interact with. Cool. Let's go put stuff in the safe. Let's go deposit these in the safe. Yeah, let's go to the safe. Where is, who has the book again right now? It's on the floorboards of the front, the front passenger. May I peruse the book? Do you have gloves? It's the staff I'm worried about. You want me to? <laughs> I can. I you have mage hand myself. <laughs> That's right. You got it too. <laughs> yeah, you can have it in your lap while we're in the car. Well, you two point. can tag team. One person can hold it with mage hand, and the other can flip with mage hand. <laughs> <laughs> like, as long as it doesn't. Time, right? but, but each of us have it. I know, but you have the rod in the mage. Yeah, the rod. I've got it in my bag. I'm just using oh, the okay, hand okay. to pull it in. Ah, 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 ah. Okay. Cool. Well, y'all are both in the back. You do whatever you want in the back. As long as the uh, as long as the book is not like giving off scary energy as I'm trying to touch it, I'm not going to worry with the mage hand. Uh, make an arcana check. All right. Well, that's a whole eight. Oh, uh, you you do get a weird vibe. Okay. Um, you can't remember specifically, but you definitely have it like in the back of your head that there is something in Fey lore about weird old books with powerful magic. Like there's something about them that's important, but it's just just out of reach. Well, in that case, not touching it, putting it in the, the seat between Cyrus and I, 
and holding it open with the mage hand to look at it. The back seat, uh, you know, po Pokey's old enough that she has the armrest. The down armrest. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't have uh, the cup holders in it. We're not that fancy, <laughs> but um, yeah, you can you can put the book on the armrest. Um, that might make it easier for you. So, when you go to start looking at the book, most of the pages are blank. And when I say most, I actually mean all but the first, like the first page you see inside. And on that page, at first there's nothing. And then as you're looking at it, it it's almost like someone starts writing. And Hello, Harry Potter. My name is Tom Riddle. Well, and it's How it's a little hard to understand. <laughs> it's it's a dialect. Dialect isn't even quite the right word. It is such an old form of Fay or Sylvan or something in that neck of the woods. It is like the Latin or like the old old English uh, to. English would be sort of the comparison. Um, it's got like a pre-Chaucer kind of <laughs> vibe to it. So you're really having to sort of work out like, oh, okay, they spell this differently. This must be pronounced like this and linking it together. doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the the gist that you're getting of it, um, it, it's hard to translate it precisely, but it is some sort of invitation to the best, the best word is power, power, authority, uh, rulership, um, the book is writing an appeal. It's, it's telling you how to start something. And I'm going to have you make a wisdom saving throw. Yeah. I say that. It's not suspicious. Natural one. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Well, don't you make me crash this car or right we'll even pull it over. Right as I was thinking I should close the book. So you all see, uh, I imagine probably more than one of you other than Lexi is like watching this experiment pretty closely. Yeah, yeah. I'm watching in the back seat. I've got like the mage hand is like on the rod, like ready to like, <laughs> not sure if I'm hitting the book or... or <laughs> Uh, you, you see a couple of things start to happen. Uh, the first thing you notice is Oryx's face just going a little slack. And you realize you're actually looking at his dragonborn face. The, the, his ring of seeming is like fritzing out a little bit. And there's actually like a green and gold and sort of orange brown swirling of energy just sort of hovering gently above the page slam the book closed <laughs> um make a strength check oh geez i got a four <laughs> Uh, you try to grab the book to close it and that shimmering energy stops your hands from coming into contact with the book. And Auric, you suddenly don't know where you are. It's a void. Just nothing all around you. And gradually the room lightens in one direction and you start to see 
what looks like a doorway. And the interior of the doorway is that green and gold and sort of orange brown energy again. And you can feel it now. It's the, it's the energy of the summer court. It's the power of the Sealy. And you can feel it radiating. And it starts to resolve a little bit. And it, it takes on a hazy view of that field that you saw before. You see the standing stones again. And you feel this powerful compulsion to walk towards it. I don't want to. And I, I've got another action idea, but I don't know timing wise if I can take it or. Uh, let's go ahead and have Oric make another wisdom saving throw. Yeah. Well, I can't do worse than I did before. How about a nine instead? Uh, on some level, you know this is bad. You know you shouldn't do this. But at the same time, you become very conscious of the fact that you've been in the human realm for a while. And for all the things that you love about it, it do, it's not home. You miss home. You miss the feeling of home. You miss the magic of home. And you feel yourself start to take a few steps forward. I do miss the magic of home. What are we seeing? Uh, this is happening very quickly. It's been about maybe 10 seconds. Okay. You saw Oryx zone out. Light show starts around the book. Uh, Cyrus reaches out to slam the book shut, gets caught on this magical force field. <clears throat> Does anyone, uh, and I suppose Lexi's driving, you could crash the car. Uh, <laughs> Desira and, and Cyrus, do you all want to try anything? I want to cast Charm Person on Auric. Mm. I mm. want to cast Message towards Auric. If y'all want me to pull over, just say the word. <laughs> I'm too busy driving to, and pay attention to the road to pay attention to what this fool's doing in my back seat right now. So I'm gonna need you all to help me with that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. So make a, is it a wisdom or charisma saving throw? Wisdom. All right, another <laughs> wisdom saving throw. All the wisdom saves. Oh, sure. Now I get an 18. Yeah, I knew that was gonna happen. So, Something happens when you do this, though. Your magic reaches out towards Auric, and it's almost like something's in the way. It's almost like someone is in the way. But it, whatever this presence is, It doesn't feel hostile and it doesn't feel like the book. So Zyra, what do you want your, your message to say? Um, Auric, remember we need you here. So Auric, you're, you're taking a few steps closer and closer to this doorway. And you, you hear like a faint whisper of something. And Zyra, what you get back over the sort of response to your message is the sound of birds. Oh, that's right. And good job. And uh, that works. that's too gentle. What you hear <laughs> is the sound of hundreds or 
maybe even a thousand crows oh. swarming and flying around and calling. Make friends and, with them. <laughs> and Auric, you suddenly the light in front of you goes out. And you feel that influence cut off. You're no longer being compelled forward. And you feel someone looming behind you. It's really funny considering that we have a blank wall here. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's incredibly dim without the light of the doorway, but there's just enough light that you can see a silhouette. And you gather a couple of things about the silhouette. This figure is seven or eight feet tall. They loom over you. Um, but they don't have like an ogre giant build. Um, it looks like a humanoid woman, but eight feet tall. Um, you, you're catching just sort of the slightest glimpse, like there's a very distant light casting just enough that you're catching like the edge of details. And the, the facial features are a little confusing. You, without uh, <laughs> assigning any particular emphasis to, to Oryx's personal inclinations, uh, you, you recognize that this woman would be considered, uh, probably considered beautiful by a lot of people, but you also notice it's not quite, it's not quite a, a fey beauty. You've seen a lot of, the, there's a lot of, of fey nobles who just have this, they just project this charisma. Big beauty, yeah. This is something a little more, a little more rugged. Um, that fey beauty tends to look very like ephemeral and delicate. And this, you get the impression that this is a warrior. This is someone who stands confidently on battlefields, someone who can heft weapons as big as your body. And you also catch just the silhouette of some kind of mantle over a long cloak and the mantle is black feathers. And she's looking at you Make a history check. Oh boy. How's a five? <clears throat> the dice don't want me to know not anything. Paying attention to the <laughs> I mean, day. this is actually perfect because it fits the vagueness of what I wanted to say anyway. Uh, you feel like you know her. And very specifically, you feel like she is on your side. She is somehow for you in the sense of being an advocate, a guardian, uh, a benefactor. And she looks at you and the, there's a very stern, serious, almost grim uh, aspect to her appearance. And then it cracks for just a second and she smiles just the tiniest bit. And then this whole void space bursts apart. And you almost have the impression of this shower of black feathers. And then you're back in pokey. The force field drops. The book just falls in your lap. Close the book. Well, you actually see it looks like someone has scratched out all the text on that page. Like it's been struck through with a different hand. 
Wow. <laughs> I'm, I'm... Please take the book back. Close the book <laughs> in the car. Close the book in the car. We're not looking at the book anymore in the car. Please, please take it back. Please take it back. I... I think I might have just been involved in a Fey Lord territorial dispute. That's a new one. Maybe. Fun. So my first inclination was this book is bad. Throw it in the river. But I'm not doing that. Well, might in case it in concrete, not. then throw it in the river. <laughs> But um, at the end there, that was something, someone else. I know I'm not making sense. Nope. I know I'm not making sense. <laughs> someone drew me into the book and someone else drew me out. Ah. Okay. And then I look at Cyrus and go, tell me about the crows that you do with your thing, please. And thank you. Please and thank you. When you do your curse thing, there's like crows. Just that one time with the with the dryad. I guess it was just one time. <laughs> <laughs> Made an impression? Made an impression. I mean, that was the point when I thought that he was fae, and then he wasn't fae. Yep. Leaves an impression on the guy. <laughs> I, I need to go study. Well, you're in the car, honey, so you're going to well, have well, to wait. Well, yes. <laughs> That's exactly what Lexi would tell you. If you said you need to go study, Lexi would tell you to not get out of the car. <laughs> All right. Any other uh, dangerous magical experimentation you want to do in the back of this older model sedan? <laughs> <laughs> Pokey may have been around the block a few times, but we do like to keep her clean still, you know. She has some wear and tear, I, some old vomit that's been cleaned out, but like drunk people. No food, but, no you know, blood, like no clean. eldritch residue. Yeah, we don't we don't need eldritch residue or burn marks or anything like that. Like I think at this point Orc is napping the rest of the drive. Orc's like, I'm out. <laughs> Going to bed. All right, uh, it, you're not too far uh, away from Luz. Uh, you're okay. going sort of from, you were sort of in the center. You went deeper into Vert, dropped off Blake, and now you're kind of doubling back the other way, uh, okay. back into Falmont. Double checking my fictional geography that I wrote myself. <laughs> no one would contradict me if I said otherwise, but I feel like it needs to be correct. It's nice to know what you're talking about, you know? Yeah. It's nice <laughs> to be able to say to yourself, yeah, no, this is right. I mean, the world is living, but the space should be. Oh, Luz doesn't have a geography entry yet. <gasps> I suppose I could put it wherever. Well, we had a place. We did have a place for it. Give me I'm, a hot second. I'm pretty sure it's in Falmouth. Yeah, at least on the edge of Falmouth. Yeah, it would probably be in your intro. Yep, Falmouth. Yeah, it made sense. So, uh, you you roll up to lose. Um, you have your own parking place, kind of in the back. Uh, it's not yep. a super desirable parking place because you're not too far from the dumpster. Uh, but no one ever parks there because it's yours. Yep, and that's the only reason. It might smell a little bad, but you know what? Nobody else takes it, so. 
so it's uh it's getting into the afternoon now so you know that uh uh caleb would be starting to get things up and running for the night uh craig is probably uh getting his kitchen in order for later what do you want to do um well i'm going to use my key to get us in the back door and the staircase the spiral staircase that leads to the upstairs where my office is is right next to the back door so we go in and immediately go up the fire escape I'm you know I know the guys are there but they know that's what I do normally so hopefully the fact that they hear three other steps of footsteps won't <laughs> make them question too hard is the fire escape on the outside it well the fire when, when I say fire escape I mean like the fire door meaning the back door okay. not like fire escape like not like the New York fire not escapes. like New York fire escape okay okay yeah I'm more mean like emergency exit cool because when um, fire enters the building she's going to stand and hold her hand against the threshold and say hello friend I've returned May. I'm sorry I didn't hear all of that <laughs> Do you always talk to buildings? Is that a human custom? Uh, this building looked at me last time I walked in, so I want to let it know I arrived in peace. That's fair. It is uh, temperamental some days, so sometimes it gives me a sense about bad patrons. Since you all are sort of thinking about this, uh, everyone make either an insight or uh, arcana check. Arcana it is. <laughs> insight, man. Terrible, 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 terrible seven, I think. Dude, that's actually really cocked. Like, look at that. Yeah. It gave me the 15, but man, that was like cocked. So I got a 16. I got a 17. I got a 14. It's my house, you know. Makes so, sense. Lexi, you've definitely noticed it before. Uh, Oric and Cyrus, you felt something weird last time, but it didn't quite register. But like this specific moment of like stopping and having someone point out this weird sense of presence to this place, you do notice that there is a definite vibe as you enter this place. Um, it, it gave you kind of, it gave all of you kind of mixed responses last time. Um, this time there's more of a sense of welcome. Uh, and specifically you, it's, you would, if you said it out loud, you would feel crazy, but you almost feel like Luz is welcoming you back from battle. It's a very specific feeling. For just a second, you, you're in the headspace of like a, a, a soldier or warrior from thousands of years ago coming back from fighting monsters or uh you know fighting in a battle and it it feels like a welcome it feels like a return also in the much more tangible sense who's holding the book probably zyra yeah, it was probably Zyra since I was unlocking the thing. So one hand around the book with not touching skin to book and one hand against the threshold. Um, you and Cyrus would both notice this. You feel welcome, but when you try and bring the book and the rod, the closer you get to passing through the door, you feel like you're pushing through pressure. Mm -hmm. um, you almost get the sense that it doesn't want these items here. Um, what do you want to do? Am I stopped? You're not stopped. It's There's a, a sense of growing resistance. So this is the first time I've, like, but it's clear it's from the space it feels like it is from the i mean if you had to be really specific it's like the stones of the building
All right. Cyrus is going to like adopt his tone for like talking with talking with like informants and contacts. <laughs> It'd be like, look, I get it. It's not comfortable for any of us. Just hang on to it for a little bit and we're going to take care of it. Uh, make a persuasion check with advantage. Are we talking to Lexi talks to her building all the damn time. I mean, it's hers. Like, there's there's a feeling. She owns it. Belongs to her. <laughs> what was the roll? Eleven. Eleven. Uh, it doesn't take a ton of prodding because uh, you're coming there with Lexi, and and you know Lexi has sort of a special bond with this place. You feel the pressure lessen, and it's almost like you were pushing against something. And instead of just like stopping, now it feels like it flows around the items and it almost encases them in this sense of pressure. And actually, do you have them like where you can see them? The book and the rod? The book, yes. Uh, the, rods, the rod's in a bag. Uh, there is glowing golden light coming up from your bag and wrapped around the book now. It's very faint, but it looks exactly the same as the light that was around Lexi when you all stepped into the Fae. Mm. Okay. So let's take these to the, to the safe. That's where we're headed, up the stairs. All right, stairs, cool, stairs. Lexi pats the railing of the staircase as she walks up it, like she's greeting an old friend. Because Not because Lexi like totally understands that this building has feelings. She just likes to like personify things that have meaning to her. And so there's a connection, but Lexi doesn't fully get it. Everyone that. except Lexi, make a perception check real quick. <laughs> Woo, five. 13. 27. All right. With a 27, you notice when Lexi pats the rail the first time, there's a very gentle light. Just almost would be imperceptible. The second time, it gets lighter. The third time she pats it, she leaves a glowing golden handprint. And as she keeps her hand on it and trails up, for just a second afterwards, there's like a glowing streak going up the railing. I'm going to follow and touch and see what it feels like. You almost feel, it, it fades so quick that it's, it's almost gone by the time you get to it. But you would almost say it feels faintly warm. Hmm. Like this is a, is this, is this a metal or wood railing? You said spiral, so uh, I would think metal. metal. Metal, like this is an old iron spiral staircase. It should feel cold. Um, you know, it's it's winter outside. Uh, the you know the heat hasn't been kicked up for tonight yet, but it almost has a warmth to it that you would not expect. Meanwhile, my, my five, I'm just like. Humans are weird. <laughs> and then I awkwardly pat a stone. <laughs> I touched the staircase apparently because it's made of iron. Uh, it's got paint on top of it. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll just throw this out and you all won't. Uh, I'll trust you all not to metagame it a little. Uh, when Auric kind of just pats the stone, not really meaning anything by it, uh, there's, how do I put it? If the building was an animal, it was like it just got like scratched in just the right place for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Like a cat purring. <laughs> yeah. 
For just a second, the building purrs. <laughs> and Auric is totally oblivious. <laughs> yep. Oh, gosh. All right. So what does Lexi's office look like? Oh, sorry, I was busy, busy Googling what the spiral staircase looks like because I pictured exactly like the library of my childhood uh, that had spiral staircases in it. So I was looking to see if there was a photo. Um, the spiral staircase like in the third Indiana Jones movie? In the see, I haven't seen Indiana Jones, so I can't really... I know, I'm weird. Joe, <laughs> what is wrong with you? There's chat. We okay. have them. She just hasn't watched them. Not See, I don't like movies because then I get invested and I get a lot of anxiety and I have enough anxiety in my real life that I don't need it in like the two hour span that people use to escape from escape from real life. Like, yeah, I do the exact opposite. <laughs> All right, I'm sending you guys the picture of the staircase. Um, so Lexi's office is small and dark. Um, there, there's a small window, but you know, it, it lets light in, but not a whole lot. And it is like crammed with things, um, desk, bookshelves, you know, every single part of this space is like occupied. Not to mention Lexi is very much like her, um, her person here and, you know, everything's covered in paperwork but there's a dark safe underneath, um, actually propping up a part of the desk. It also serves as a table leg in the corner. Well, I mean, desks are great, but sometimes it works just as well if you want a bigger desk to <laughs> make your own out of a piece of wood. Um, so she does have a safe that like stands on four little legs. Um, the one that comes to mind is the one in the bedroom in solitude at the Proudspire Manor. Just like squatty thing, but tall enough that you could have an actual like table under it. And you know, and it's got a door and a lock on it. You know, it's it's a regular human safe. It's not magical as far as Lexi knows. You know, it was it came with the building. Um, but you know, she uses it. It's it's been there for a long time. All right. Uh, so I assume you go over and, and pop the safe open? Yeah. And there's probably, there's probably an empty, um, couple of empty bank bags, you know, because normally what we do with the safe is we put the money in it, at, the cash in it at the end of the day so that we can make the deposit in the morning. So. So are you all going to deposit them in any special way? wrap the rod a lot <laughs> the book just goes down at the bottom yeah the book can probably just get down the bottom but yeah we can wrap the rod up i mean it fits it's kind of at an angle Am i right? picture it kind of at an angle but you know it's it fits in there can i just deposit like the whole messenger bag i just i mean if you want to sure <laughs> you don't need any of that I got I got duplicates in the trench coat. Okay. Sure. Then no. We just kind of shove the bag in, and Lexi kind of moves it around so that she knows that the door will still shut, and that there's space for the bank bag. So she'll be the one to put the bank bag away tonight. When the Not door shuts, you can see the golden light sort of spilling out around the door, and when the door shuts, it's dark for a second. And then you see the light start to suffuse into the metal and then into the stones around it. And then it dims and dims until it almost could look like a trick of the light. Huh, haven't seen it do that in a while. In a while, and then it's done that before. <laughs> Weird things happen in Luz. It's an old place. It's been here longer than it's been a bar. It's just how it is. What was it before how it was a bar? <laughs> um, I gotta think about that. Lexi has only known it as Luz. I'll tell you that much. Um, you know, she's only known it as Luz because 
Lou owned it for such a long time, but she knows that it was other things. Um, it, it's had a life as a restaurant of some sorts for a long time, just because of the furniture that's been in it. But there's um, rumors of it having been other things. And in maybe at one point, you know, think back to like when taverns had bedrooms and stuff, like we're going way back. Um, but, you know, there's been other stores in it. It's been mostly retail, but there's, there's some rumored history of it being more than just a store and just a bar. Uh, just to quantify, make a history check with advantage. Okay. All of us? Uh, just Lexi. Just Lexi. Ah, sweet. <laughs> that advantage paid off. So what'd you get? I got a 19. All right. Uh, you don't remember a time when something wasn't here. And actually, you've never heard of a time when something wasn't here. As far as you know, in... As far back as you can find any kind of hearsay or records or anything, a building has stood on this spot. And a lot of them have been bars, restaurants, taverns, and inns going back a very long time. Uh, just off the top of your head, you, you vaguely recall I mean, honestly, like several hundred years worth of different things that have been here, just because it's something you would have picked up from Lou. Uh, he would pontificate about the history of the place and all of the lore and legacy. And, and he took pride in being able to like, he could recite uh, each place and how long it had been here. Who owned it, you know, those sorts of things. <laughs> and he himself could go back uh, almost 500 years and told you that there were places even before that. Lou has pl plenty of times told the story of when the indoor toilets were installed. <laughs> <laughs> even though that was before his time, he can still tell the story of the plumbing. All right, you have deposited uh, the items Luz has responded to them in a strange way, but you feel like they're very safe. And what do you want to do? So do we need to call Vela or go visit her? I definitely don't want her coming here. Yeah, right. It's up to you all. Two of you have her number, so. <laughs> well. One of us has her number. One of us has somebody called Sweet Cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. One of you doesn't realize you have her number. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Yeah. I would recommend against her coming here, at least. Yeah. And I think, I, you know... We can, we can call her and tell her we're coming to her. I don't think there's any harm in that. And everything she wants is at the storage unit. So either we go to her or we meet her there. That's a good point. Well, and also, uh, again, what she asked from you all is to make it stop. Yeah. Hmm. Make it stop and keep it quiet. You almost get the impression that like, she didn't even care about actually getting the materials back because okay. he stole things that like weren't super valuable like i mean they'd probably send someone to come get it if you tell them but she just wanted it done okay so in that case we could even just send her a text message saying mission accomplished i think it might be better with a phone call I am aware that I would rather send a text message. But I mean, I'm not saying we should. I'm just saying we could. 
you you may not be well i don't know you may not be able to find your phone number since it's so sweet cheeks <laughs> but um you know it, it may be a little dangerous for you to send a text message surprisingly numbers in his phone that are labeled sweet cheeks sorry say again Arik has three numbers in his phone that are labeled sweet cheeks. I do? Some, yes. How did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> which one's which? You keep meeting up with. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh honey, we're gonna have to work with you. When did these even get here? Do we need to get our... Uh... Do we think she's going to ask questions? And if she is, do we need to get our story straight about how much we want to divulge? Yeah, I think we should get our story straight. It's better safe than sorry. I would strongly encourage us to suggest, if not outright say, that any artifacts were destroyed in the fight. Not just to Vela, but to anybody else. So we could either. We even need to tell people there were artifacts. That's what I'm. No. We don't need to well, say. Well, Vela knows before. about the book at least. We showed her the picture. Right. We found right. Blake. We found the stolen things. Yep. And if you want the stolen things, we've got the key to the storage facility. It seems like he'd been living there. Yeah. Let's yeah. get ready to put it. So it's a bit of a mess. Mm -hmm. I think that's a fairly simple. Yeah. He got, I'm just... himself, he got himself mixed up in some magical ritual over his head, but once we ended the ritual, his power is back to normal. I just know that she is aware of the book. And so I don't, you know, if she asks about it, do we say we didn't see anything? Do we say that we saw it get destroyed? Yeah, maybe just, it was powering a ritual, the ritual ended. Kind of leave it at that. Fair enough. And I think we could also probably use that same story with my contact and, you know, leave out who it was just a human trying to stir up racist sentiment against the Fae. All right, so who do you want to talk to first? Let's call Vela. Let's call Vela, yeah. Gonna All go right. outside of the building. Yeah, signal works better outside. <laughs> also, I don't want to, I just don't want to, like, for someone with a magical perception that high, I don't want her to know that I'm around magical items. And I think the building itself is going to protect that knowledge. Yeah. I don't have true reasons to think that <laughs> the building itself is, but it's just, you know, one of those, eh, you go outside <laughs> the town. All right. Uh, so you're going to get a little ways away from the building and then call? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, <clears throat> it rings two, three, four times. Um, and then finally, it, it right before it would go to voicemail, it suddenly clicks up. And you she almost sounds out of breath, like, <laughs> Hello? Vela, it's Dr. Skylark. Oh, uh, Dr. Skylark with the interesting tattoo. Right, that. Uh, you have good news for me, I hope. Do, indeed. Uh, we found Blake and uh, we uh, managed to stop what he was in the middle of. And it seems he will not be... Uh, bothering you again. Um, the, all the stolen materials we found, they're locked in a storage facility uh, that we have the key to, if you uh, would like them returned to you. But it seems that your um, issue is now ended and quiet. 
she says, uh, <laughs> I knew it was a good idea to entrust this to, hey, hold on a minute. You hear what sounds like a massive fire getting cl- like closer really fast. <laughs> and then you hear sort of like a, almost like a rush of wind chimes almost. Um, Is she dueling? This poor woman teaches middle schoolers, who knows? <laughs> you get the impression you have interrupted her during some kind of magical training session. But do I need to call back later? Is this a good time? <laughs> she says, yeah, just one more second. And then you hear a much, much bigger fire. And then you hear a bunch of people going, oh. She goes, yeah, okay, we're good now. Uh, all right, excellent. Uh, so everything's handled. No more fey attacks. Uh, what did you, sorry, uh, there was uh, some background noise. What did you say happened with Blake? Uh, he, it seems he's not going to be a problem anymore. All right. I will not ask any more details about things I don't want to know about. <laughs> it's not as bad as you think it is, but we're not going to tell you anymore either. <laughs> uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll leave out role-playing banking information. Uh, we'll just say that she arranges for you all to be paid. Um, Lovely. And she says, uh, so this is going to stay quiet, right? No. I can't think of any reason why it wouldn't. All right. Do you want your spell books back? Yeah, I guess. Uh, you hear like snap at someone. Uh, and she relates the address and the information to some flunky off screen. Um, and you're, you're sort of getting this mental picture of her running this, this evocation class, uh, like some kind of like warrior queen, just like, you know, no problem, just swatting people aside. Um, nobody can can touch her in this space and she's having this conversation and like laying out a class of advanced evocation students with no issue whatsoever tell your assistant i'll leave the key to the padlock at the main desk of the ravensbrooks kent building oh i doubt she'll need a key (laughs) but will Um. the assistant (laughs) yeah uh, she kind of perks well, up. She says, did, are did I hear it work? He's going to call me, right? <laughs> no. No, no. He's, no. You're good. <laughs> she, uh, she yells to someone named Barnabas, uh, the, the off-screen flunky, and gives him all the details to uh, go and take care of the locker. Um, she says, all right, then. Uh, well, I hope that this isn't the only time I'll get to see you all with, uh, such a, uh, swift and, uh, thorough handling of this situation. You have I'm trying to think of the right word to use. I don't feel like she would say favor. <laughs> You have, you have earned uh, some considerable goodwill from the Blackthorn Circle. And uh, we might be calling again in the future if we need a little help and we can always use more uh, talented individuals around. Lovely. Have a good evening not getting yourself exploited. (laughs) Oh, you don't have to worry about me. Now, (laughs) this class that hasn't been practicing their fifth level spells is a different story. (laughs) You hear another spell go off. 
<laughs> exactly how my father would have handled the situation as a middle school teacher. <laughs> All right. And then I guess I will uh, be calling Mr. Pevins on our behalf. All right, so uh, Vela hangs up. Um, we now you have, have 500 gold in yep. each of our bank accounts now. Yeah, within, I mean, within like half an hour, 500 gold marks drop for each of you. Yep. Um, okay. And you call uh, Pevins at the number that Steve gave you. Do I actually have any notes on patents? Mm. All right, uh, so you call patents. Um, the, the phone rings and The, the voice that picks up is, it's actually, it sounds like a young woman. And she says, uh, uh, LS Corner Convenience, how may I help you? Uh, hello, my name is Oric Darlanton and I'm calling for Mr. Pevins. Is he available? Oh, yeah. Uh, hey, uh, Twill, go and, go and get old Mr. Pevins. I thump, 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 thump. There's a slight delay. You're hearing like, like store music playing very softly. Um, and what sounds like people, uh, not a lot, but like a, a couple of people sort of milling around. Man, I got to take my allergy medicine. Welcome to Virginia in the springtime. In the springtime, and all the Bradford pears that are blooming. Yeah. They smell terrible. And the blue cars turn green. Yeah, we no longer have blue cars. We have green cars. My car spent eight hours outside, and it's yellow. Yeah. Yep. I was walking um, through the park and playing Pokemon Go, and about every two or three minutes. I would have like a fresh slight dusting on my phone. I, I've been sitting with the window. There's dust, there's pollen on the table. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was walking, I got my oil changed on Friday and it's close enough to our house that I walked home and then walked back to go pick it up. And yeah, sunglasses, phone, all covered. <laughs> Bad. All right. Uh, so after a little bit, um, I'm going to do better at taking my notes now and not later. Um, you, you finally hear, you hear the woman's voice again. Uh, well, actually, first you hear an old, older voice. Uh, uh, Charlotte, you said I had a, a what are they called? Uh, a phone call, Mr. Pevins. Oh, it, yes, a phone call. And he, you hear someone take the phone. Uh, it sounds a little weird when they take the phone. There's almost like a clacking to it. Um, and you get the, the mental image of non-traditional digits holding the receiver. Uh, I was picturing it being upside down. <laughs> It might be as well. There's a there's a weird quality to it. <laughs> when you said weird quality, it was like sound quality. It's upside down. <laughs> uh, this is uh this is uh Pevins Pe Pevins speaking. Hello, Mr. Pevins. My name is Oric Darlant, and I'm an associate of Steve Barnes. Uh, I've been helping out with the the problem that you brought to him. Oh yes, uh, Steve is uh. Has, has everything been uh, uh, taken care of? Well, sir, I have good news and bad news. So I will start with the good news. And the good news is that uh, we found and stopped the culprit. Uh, the, the bad news is that 
Uh, we were not able to identify the culprit in the magical explosion. Uh, make a deception check versus the uh, <laughs> the 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 frail old goat man. <laughs> <laughs> well, how's about a thirteen? Let's see. Against a frail old goat, old goat man. <laughs> uh, he rolled double twos with a plus one. <laughs> well, that's uh, that's fantastic. <laughs> I'll what what what's it called, Charlotte? Oh, uh, Mr. Pevins will will have the the money wired to you. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much, Mr. Pevins, and I'm sorry that we could Why not, is it uh... called a wire? No, I'm giving him I'm giving him gold, not not wire. No, Mr. Pevins just it'll it's okay. <laughs> it's 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 good. Well, okay, Charlotte. You hear the clack clack and uh, you hear the someone else take the phone back. She says uh, thank you. Uh, sorry about that. He's uh, very old, but also very new to here. So we're still working on phones. <laughs> he sounds like a wonderful individual, and I hope to work with him again. He sounds fantastic. He is very sweet. <laughs> sweet. <laughs> That's way of putting it. He means well. So I'm going to scroll back now. So 300 gold marks. Uh, it takes a little bit longer uh, to come through. You get the impression Vela has financial flunkies uh, who <laughs> she can call and make things happen immediately. Uh, this is probably more uh, Pevin's getting assistance from Charlotte to do like online banking. <laughs> so you can just sort of imagine the comedy and horror of that unfolding. Yes. <laughs> no, Mr. Pevins, you have to push here, not there. That, <laughs> you just canceled it, Mr. Pevins. <laughs> all right. So all of you uh, are now level four, which you'd already done on your sheets. Um, each of you has 500 gold. And uh, Oric has another 300 over top of that to figure out what he wants to do with. <laughs> I will um, gladly split that with the rest of the party. 75 apiece. No. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, and what do you all want to do? Do, do any of us know anything about sending Faye home. Like, I kind of want to go check out Blake's apartment. I don't know if we need to, like, get... But I, I, I'm like, I don't know the process of that. I don't know if we need to get authorities involved. I don't necessarily want to get those Faye in trouble. So... What would, what but they just want to go back home. I was just going to say, I, I know that I came through uh, not quite legitimate channels, but what would I know about the legitimate process back and forth? Uh, so, I, ironically, in paperwork terms, you didn't pass through legitimate channels, but metaphysically, you did pass through <laughs> legitimate channels because uh, you passed through the main gate. So there are several permanent, stable doorways between the two worlds that are very closely controlled. Uh, you all know for sure, all of you would have heard of this, there are naturally occurring gates that might not have been discovered yet. Uh, as the authorities have become aware of them, they have either closed them if they could or have put them under uh, sort of the same lockdown process. Uh, but there's also illicit gates that haven't been found uh, and also gates that have been intentionally opened. Uh, but it takes a lot of power to do that. Uh, beings that pass through one of these gates are stable to a certain extent. Um, 
they can theoretically remain in the human realm indefinitely without issue. But there are other ways of bringing Fey over. There's also short-term summoning, which it, it almost is like pulling them on a rubber band. The magic pulls them into the world and holds them there for a time, but there's tension on the band. And as soon as the spell is released, they just pop back. Yeah. Um, even, if, and even a fae who has been brought over, a non-native fae who has been brought over through a, a gate can be banished with certain spells. As far as whether those specific guys are there, you don't know. Um, you'd have to go uh, check and see. We we could go check and maybe direct them towards the nearest gate home. Although one of them was a red cap. Yeah. But if another thing to consider, if they are still there, since one of them is a red cap, we should probably make sure he goes home. Yeah. Don't really want him causing mischief in our city. Yeah. He might not go willingly, although we can try. <laughs> do we need to sleep before we do that? Yeah. Uh, just to uh, avoid a more complicated uh, scene and having to work out like if people have rested or not, right. uh, you swing by, you poke your heads in, and they seem to be gone. Uh, the place is just sitting open. The TV is still on. Um, and you can actually see like little like tiny uh, butt indents on the couch still. Um, but they seem to have just poof, vanished. Is the weird like super force fieldy whatever -y stuff gone? Uh, it is dissipating. Um, what you were mostly getting was just residue. Um, you're sort of piecing together whatever was happening to Blake. It left an echo in that place. Mm -hmm. And so probably by now, the warehouse space looks like what you saw at the apartment. But it's not active. It'll just wash away on its own. All right. Turn the TV off. Oh, and somebody want to call Archie, tell him things are okay now, since I doubt he's high on Vela's contact. Sure. Uh, Notice uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give Archie a call. <laughs> call Archie and tell him his tabs do. Yeah. Archie, your tabs do. <laughs> How is that? Uh, so it. It rings a couple of times and you catch kind of a conversation uh, already in motion. Of course I haven't forgotten the thing you did when we were 12. My arm was broken. I fell out of that tree. Early, you answered the phone. Remember you had to actually talk on the phone? When oh, the phone? oh, Dr. Skylark, I'm so sorry. Uh, I was just reminding uh, I'm sure you Argus know. here. Uh, that certain things uh, might be forgiven, but not forgotten. Yes. Archie, remind me, were there any materials that were stolen from you that you dearly want back? Uh, you actually intervened before his stuff could be taken. Yeah. Can you ask that of Argus for us? Uh... You, you hear some like murmuring. No, of, no. Uh, he says that they didn't make off with anything particularly valuable. Okay. Well, just so you know, uh, they should, uh, we took care of it. Um, and I don't think we'll be seeing any more of these type of stealers anytime soon. Um, but you may want to double check all of your possessions and their locations and their security, just to make sure. And uh, 
watch out and don't get yourself turned into a T-Rex anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> if you do, give me a call, please. Well, that's a relief. This is, uh, this is far more of the family business than I've had any interest in being a part of uh, and hopefully won't be seeing much of in the future. That's very fair. I'm giving another uh, a reprise of the stories I was telling um, last week uh, in two weeks time. So just to let you know, if you want to come hear them again, uh, there'll be another chance. Fantastic. Yes, I, I suppose the department is probably still a bit chaotic. I suppose I should, I suppose I should check in and find out what's going on. It seems it should be safe to do that now. Excellent. Our, uh, well, are, are you okay, Dr. Skylark? This is, uh, I imagine, more adventure than uh, you are perhaps used to. It's, it's, it's been a week. <laughs> it's been a week. Uh, I might have some stuff to talk to you about. But I think first I need to rest. Well, I look forward to it. Uh, I had a particularly fine uh, import that I was hoping to share. I wonder if those Fae left any of it intact. I suppose I'll have to return to my office and find out. That's a brilliant idea. I'll talk to you soon. See you around the office. I look forward to it. As you start to hang up, you hear them, you hear Argus and Archie start yelling at each other again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, family. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of family, uh, Cyrus, your phone rings and it's your dad. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Hey, Dad. Hey. <laughs> so that uh, that nice Blake boy woke up, and he was so nice. I said, "Hey, you shouldn't get up," and he said some like some stuff. And then I was like, oh, yeah, you should do whatever you want. Because you're like, yeah. <laughs> it's all good. I had no idea that pot could be done magically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wondered about leaving an enchantment student, but... <laughs> Natural cause and effect. <laughs> <laughs> Too white to move. Yeah, so like, uh, <laughs> don't forget dinner on on Sunday. Suns day day sun sun Sunday. All right, drink some water, Dad. Hey, I made him a grilled cheese, but I guess he doesn't want it now. <laughs> You hear your dad just start like chomping a grilled cheese sandwich. <laughs> he, charmed, he charmed him and left. Okay. All right. What do you all want to do? Cyrus, do we need to go check on your father? Yeah. He's fine. Sounds like he's more than fine. <laughs> oh. Yeah. He had the word with all the call. He's fine. Mom will be home soon anyway. So. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know if we need to track Blake back down. Yeah. Might not be a bad idea. I'm not sure what trouble. Very least, make sure he doesn't uh, get his hands on any more Fey artifacts. Yeah. All right. Anything else? We all enjoy a nice drink at Lou's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
And because Lou's welcomed us back as returning heroes, I feel it's necessary for us to lift a pint of mead in the traditional style. I lost them too. <laughs> that feeling only intensifies around the table. Um, you feel the stones almost resonate with this moment. And you can actually almost it's a it's a week night. It's not a super crowded night in Luz, but for just a second, it feels crowded with other people celebrating. And you almost can see out of the corner of your eye other people sharing toasts and cheers and uh, you can almost hear people singing uh, songs of celebration and victory. For just a second, the bar feels full in this almost overpowering sense. And then your glasses come down and it fades. But there's still like a lingering warmth in the room. No one else seems to have noticed it. Yeah, it does that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> like, make eye contact with the other three people and, and like, y'all, yeah? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> do, do, do buildings here do that a lot? Just this one. Okay. As far as I can tell. You're in good company. All right. Well, I think we'll put a pin in it there for this week. Um, like I put in the uh, Facebook message, the plan is that th there's no specific like, here's the next thing you're going to do. Um, I have some ideas of things that will be happening sort of in and around the city. Uh, if there are any topics you all want to follow up on, any dangling threads, um, it'll also be a chance to do some shopping. Um, yeah. So we don't have to like go through it in advance, but if you have ideas of things you're interested in, um, if you want to shoot those to me in a message between now and I guess Tuesday after next, um, we'll be ready to do a downtime episode. Yay. It, it'll be my birthday. Happy birthday. Yay, birthdays. And hopefully I'll have a real camera again by then. Yeah. <laughs> Great. I might use and it as an excuse to buy like the nicer one that I actually wanted, but was sold out. <laughs> yeah. And just in case it wasn't clear in my Facebook message, the this Tuesday meeting is a quarterly thing. So it's not yeah. every week. Yeah, that's what I figured. Yeah, yeah I was like quarterly. Eh. We could even, <laughs> we could just take a break or we could even do like weird one shots once a quarter yeah yeah and i mean this is also just a side gig so depending on what is next on the docket for me i may or may not be there for the next quarterly meeting yeah, yeah. Cool. all mm -hmm. right I means i can get my wine membership back <laughs> I'll go ahead and yeah stop when you become stream. a tasting room employee you you're you lose your wine membership <laughs> Employee discount supersedes the wine club membership. I got a very sad.